Let's go through the basics of building stuff in Rover Builder. We'll build a basic four-wheeled rover with a rotating lifter scoop. This is the building mode where you can design your vehicles. You can rotate the view by clicking and dragging with the middle mouse button. Zoom by scrolling. And move the center point of the view with the right mouse button, like this. This is the central unit and power source of the vehicle. Every part of the vehicle has to be in some way connected to this box for it to work. You can't remove this part. In the top left you'll see all the building materials you can use. We'll go through these along the build process. You just select a material, let's select steel, and start building around the central part. Building with these materials works by clicking and dragging along the grid, so that at least one end is connected to something else. With steel you can only build in 45 degree angles. Now I don't want these parts here, so I can select them by clicking them and remove them either with the delete key or with this button here. As you can see the grid aligns to 90 degree angles according to your viewpoint. So building in different directions works by first setting an appropriate view angle so that the grid aligns correctly. Let's build a simple frame for the rover. The axle is a rod that attaches to steel. Things attached to the axle spin freely on its axis. We can test this by going into the driving mode. To do that just press go under here. The rover slowly descends to the ground and as you can see these steel joints are rigid and this axle joint is rotating freely. Let's go back to the building mode by clicking here. Let's delete these and make a simple suspension system for the rover. Suspension systems make the rover more durable as parts don't break off as easily in bumps and collisions. We'll use the springs here to make this whole part springy. Springs can be attached between any two steel points. Let's then add the wheels. Just drag and drop the wheel from this wheel button here, like this. Make sure the wheel has enough space to fit. They can be attached to either axles or steel beams, but steel joints are a bit more robust. Every wheel has its own electric motor, so you don't have to make any transmission systems. While attaching a wheel you can flip its direction by scrolling the mouse wheel before releasing the left mouse button. There's no built-in steering in the wheels, so we'll make a steering system next. There's a steering part we can use for this. It moves back and forth along the steel beam you attach it to, with left and right arrow keys by default. Let's make a frame for the steering system using steel, axles and wheels. Now when we attach a steering part here, it moves along this steel beam. We'll then fix this side of the steering part to the main frame like this. What happens if the steering part is forced to move the steel beam that's going through it? And that makes this steering system work. Now in this case the steering with left and right arrow keys happens to be inverted, so we'll have to change the key bindings. You can adjust different parts' options by selecting them and clicking the Options button. To change the key commands you simply click these icons and press the key you want to associate with that action. Now our vehicle is ready to go and drive around. But we'll also make a rotating lifter for picking stuff up. To make a rotating platform for the lifter we can use the motor parts. The motor attaches to steel and simply rotates along its axis. The motors are controlled by default with up and down arrow keys, so we'll have to change that so that they don't interfere with the wheels. I'll also reduce the max velocity of the motors a bit. Okay, so now you can see how the motors rotate like this. You can then build stuff around the motors like this. Let's build the main frame for the lifter.
Okay, so the idea is to make this scoop move up and down. So we need to make these joints rotate along this axis, because right now they are fixed joints. We could do it with axles, but another method is to use bearings. They make a steel joint a rotary joint. As with the wheels you can rotate it while placing it, and the green coloring indicates how the steel beams will rotate. Now the lifter frame works as intended, but we still need to power the up-down movement. We'll do it with a hydraulic piston. Let's add a piston here. It contracts and expands on command, so here it will push the lifter frame up and down, like this. A piston is set to the fully expanded state by default, so here we need to adjust it a bit to be able to lift the scoop a bit higher. In the options menu we'll set the initial length to 80%. So now the lifter works nicely. And that's it, the rover is now ready for the mission. There's just a couple more essential things in the building mode. In every mission you have three slots down here in which to build rovers. You can change between the slots just by clicking them. This means you can use three different rovers to complete each mission. These slots are mission specific, so a rover you build here in the slot 1 won't be there in the next mission. If you do want to save your design to be used in other missions, you can go to the rover gallery here. Simply click the plus icon on an empty slot to save the current design. This will not be tied to the rover slot in this mission. So if you change the design later here, it will not change the saved design in the rover gallery. If you've built something in a slot and then load a design from the gallery, it'll replace the current rover in the slot. And that's all the basics in the building mode. Now just let your imagination free and have fun building. <laughs>